G'day, it's Arne from Obishear here. So today we're doing a quick unboxing video so you can know what to expect when you buy one of our 37mm foot pairs. So this is the case it comes in, nice little sturdy case. Open her up, there it is. So you'll get your um, instruction manual obviously. This is a little instructions on how to look after the batteries. This is important uh, because you'll be storing the batteries for long periods of non-use. It's, it's, there's a procedure here for you to follow, so have a read of that. Now what you'll get is the big secateur. This is the most powerful secateur we do. Uh, two batteries and two sets of blades. The charger, the tools. So I'll just lay that out for you. So there's the, the blades, the foot pairing blades. The tools, so you've got um, a couple of allen keys and a uh, spanner. That's a little note from Heidi to say she's quality controlled it. The charger is capable of charging three batteries and there are three battery holes, but that's because when they are sold as a pruning secateur, the, some, the pro professional pruning guys who go, you know, eight, nine hours a day flat out, they, they like to have three batteries, but for the foot pairing, two batteries is heaps. Uh, and that lets us make them a bit more affordable. Now, the battery should do about five, six hours of foot pairing um, before you need to change it, and there's two batteries in it. Those batteries will, on the screen, uh, beep at you when they're at 20%, which means that's your cue to change the battery, and that way you get the most battery life out of them. When you put the batteries away, fully charge them, but first turn the machine off, take them off the machine. So if you have them on here, um, make sure that the machine's turned off, take the battery off, put it on the charger, fully charge it, and then put it away for storage. And that way you'll get nice long life out of your batteries. So when they first get to you, they'll have the pruning blades attached, and that's so that you can have a play with them. Everyone gets a bit excited about how powerful these things are, so so that you can go out, you can trim a few trees, whatever. Um, we've got those curved blades on there. A few basic features, so to turn it on, you press and hold the power button, and you'll get a beep, and then a little bit later another beep and that that means it's ready to go then you go tap tap on the trigger and off you go the trigger allows you also to change the opening size so if you hold the trigger in after one and a half seconds that'll beep and there you go you've got a smaller size so if you're doing smaller cuts or just uh, rapid cuts that makes it a little bit faster if you want full capacity go to the biggest and if you want fine motor control over the trigger the biggest setting does you give you a little bit finer control when you're trying to nibble. So I'm going to run you through how to change the blades now. So we'll just uh, put that secateur there, take the battery off, and get the foot pairing blades. So these come ready to go with a drive gear already attached. So we'll just get that out of the packet there. Okay, so that's your two blades. That's your bottom blade, that's your top blade. Drive gear's already attached. So what you do is you get the smaller, uh, sorry, Allen key, pull that off. Pull this side plate, that reveals the drive gear. It's a quick and easy thing to do. And of course, when you're not full pairing, put these back on and you can use them in the orchard, all sorts of things. I like cutting poly pipe with them when, when we're um, fixing water leaks. So then you undo your locking nut here, and then the main nut. The locking nut holds everything in, tight, uh, in place, so that's got to be good and tight. And then you use your spanner to undo the main nut. Then the whole lot pops out like that. Take those blades off, take that bolt out. So that's your pruning blade set now, and put that aside. Now, put the foot pairing bottom blade on and the top blade, put the bolt through there. That there, you'll notice, has got a flat side to it and that lock, locks into the chassis here, so you just twist it until that goes through nicely. I'm holding that on with my thumb like that. So, and you put the lock nut on just loosely. So not the lock nut, the main nut, just loosely. Then you put the lock nut back in. So those two gears, they need to mesh. I like to just give them a bit of a twist loosely. Um, come on. 
in you go. There we go. Okay, so that lock nut's ready to be tightened there. So now, I'll just loosen him off. Make sure those two are meshing there. So you can test that if you turn that, both are turning. Get your spanner. And you just tweak it. Don't put it too tight, because that's what controls the pressure on your blades. And then this little lock nut is what holds it all in place. So you do that one up good and tight. So that's good and tight. And then put the side plate back on. Not too tight, just, just firm, otherwise you'll do some damage there. Okay, now put the battery in. Press and hold the power button. Tap, tap, and you're off. Okay, so now you're ready to go foot pairing. Now those blades are intentionally made to overlap a little bit. That's so you've got plenty of room to wiggle. Um, and if you end up sharpening your blade and it gets a bit worn out or whatever, you've got plenty of work time in. Design the blades so that they've got maximum work life in them. So now you've got your two openings. You hold the trigger in, smaller, bigger. So whichever opening best works for you, and then you can do that real fine nibbling work on the feet. The other thing, um, when you first get it, you'll notice if I have my finger, as long as I've got a bare finger on the trigger, this machine has a contact protection system. So if I touch anywhere at the front that's metal, it'll give you that E1 code and beeping, and it won't go. So then if you try and work it, it won't go. If you give it two taps on the trigger, then it goes again. Okay, um, now that system, when you're hanging onto the sheep's leg, that little current that comes off the trigger and passes through you can conduct up the sheep's leg. So there is a way, uh, we recommend you wear a rubber glove on this hand, and that way that insulates your hand against that current conducting up the sheep's leg. The other way, you can bypass that system if you put a rubber glove on this hand as well, but just be aware then that you won't have any protection if you cut yourself. You can also turn that completely off, but that's something you'll have to give us a ring for and um, we'll walk you through that and uh, yeah, the, if you want to want to have that option. So that's the foot pairer. Um, everything's there for you. There's a little bit of oil here, so we recommend just when you're ready to go, dribble a little bit of oil just in between the blades here, like so. Work it and that's it. Don't overdo it. Um, you don't want to get oil all through the insides of it. You just need a little bit between the blades. And that drive gear there, you give that a grease probably oh, once a week if you're working flat out. And just give it a clean out under this cover here. So thanks for watching and thanks for supporting us here at Mobishear. We're a family business, so we really appreciate your support. And of course, we'd go out, we try and go out of our way to look after you. So we've got after sales support for all our products. We've got spare parts for everything. If you break something or whatever, give us a call. We've got it in stock. We stock everything on site at our headquarters. So um, you can be confident if you buy one of our products, you're going to be fully supported. Thanks again. And uh, that's for me today. Thank you.